The Fight Buzz on Into Boxing. Welcome back. Another week, another show. Another Wasserman signing. Last week was Hosea Stewart. Today, Ali Razor Gadiri. Razor Ali with Dean White. Razor Ali, welcome to the show. How are you doing, mate? Thank you. All good. It's a pleasure to be part of the team. Uh, really delighted. I see a, a bright future, to be honest. Yeah, well, we'll speak about that in a moment. Dean, how are you doing up there? You okay, mate? I'm all good, man. Yeah, all is well. Nice to meet you, Ali, man. Nice to meet you, Dean. It's a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, great, great, great. Ali, I want you. You've got. I'm just going to jump straight into it. You've got a fascinating um, backstory, which we'll jump into uh, in just a few minutes' time. Uh, but first up, you've signed with Wasserman, who have who, who've been aggressive recently. They've signed a few really interesting fights. Things to look out for. It's an exciting time for yourself uh, joining the Salem brothers. Very true. Um, I, first of all, I'm. I'm really delighted to be signed with Wasserman and with Sauerland Brothers because um, they, they, they really got in the business um, and uh, a few times we had a meeting, they, they promised me they'd look after me. Like any other fighter, they want to be looked after with the promoter, you know. And then I'm, I'm delighted that I work with the best in the business. Um, just uh, let's see how it goes now. You um you you've you've gone through hardships already before you, before we even start talking about your career. Just just to to let the, the the people watching and listening to this know. Just just tell us a little bit about you and your backstory and where you've come from. So, um, the place I came from is just totally different. You know, um, um, I'm from Iran, from Tehran, from um, a very rough place. It's it's very famous in my whole country. Uh, the place is just um unbelievable it's like like the movies because uh when i'm talking to you right now here i just i appreciate god every day when i wake up that i can be alive because i, I was i was about to die like many many times you know every day for me was a matter of surviving um it, it's just a bad neighborhood um robbery gang shooting stabbing you look in someone's eyes here comes a stab you in your heart and they say because because I didn't like the way you look at my eyes. That's why I slap you. You know, it's like a crazy place. Um, um, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to 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 be like a normal kid from a very rough neighborhood. Didn't didn't finish my education. Um, and um, when I was when I was two, my parents they divorced because my father was a heroin addicted. And um, and then my, my grandparents started looking after me, but uh, it was around when I was six years old. Um, we were coming back from this trip with my, with my relative and with my family. We were eight people in the car. Um, I saw all my family died in front of me, except me. Uh, I, I was the only person who survived the car accident. But I was burned. All my face was burned. My body was burned. Uh, they kept me in hospital for for three months, taking me to a steam room with a jet wash, trying to rub my skin till I was passing out. You know, I don't remember the rest. I was just waking up in the bed, in the pain with the bandage on. Um, so uh, just uh, literally released off the hospital. My father kidnapped me for a year because he was a heroin addict. He took me from my mom. Nobody knew where I am, no food, no clothes in winter, in an abandoned house. Um, trying to escape every day, but it was impossible. You know, I'm six years old. I don't know where I live. I'm scared, you know, my father can't beat me up. It was a few months when my father um, just left me in the, in the abandoned house and it was I, saw, I could hear him is coming behind the door um talking to talking to a lady and and I realized he wants to sell me for for the heroin and that time you know my, I was like my I saw my family died I could I could take it um when I be used when I was a kid I could take it my father kidnapped me I could take it but to think of, I'm not going to see my mother anymore, that killed me. You know, I said, if, if he sells me, then I don't know when I'm going to see my mother anymore. Because 
when I was kid, I was when my father kidnapped me. I was literally crying every day. All I was asking from God, I just want to see my mother. Um, but and if he sells me, how how can I see my mother? How can I escape? You know. Um, but again, I, I'm very blessed. God loves me. Um, the deal didn't happen because the lady she didn't bring the money. She wanted to see me first, and my father was like, "No, you give me the money, you take the kid." That's it, simple as that. So it didn't happen because she didn't have the money at that time. Um, my father kidnapped me for a year. I was there. One day he was high on, on, on the heroin. He came, beat me up. He said to me, go to your mother. And that day I was the happiest boy in, in the world, to be honest. I got a chance to see my mother again. I went back home. But because it's a bit deeper than that, you know, we can't just have it in, in one one day talking about it but to make it a shorter story for you home wasn't a place for me that i could go home because my grandmother lost 12 her 12 12 her daughter teenager daughter she's crying doing self-harming at home i don't want to be in that environment i'll go outside it's just violence it's fight um it's robbery it's rape and i'm like what can I do? I can't go home. I can't be outside. So, again, I was blessed. My coach, my kickboxing coach, he, he took me, he put me in a gym. I was in a better place. At age of eight, I started doing kickboxing, doing a lot of competition. Um, started being an Iranian national team, went to a few fights, got some mm, title in Iran. Um... And then at the age of 16, I went to fight against um, against WMC world title champion in China. I was 16 years old. I took my bag alone. I went to China to fight. And I didn't know who I'm fighting. I didn't know the guy is a world champion. 26 years old. And I'm only 16. Uh, it was a good experience, to be honest. I learned a lot. Uh, I could handle the, the crowd, uh, the TV, the, the camera. I lost... But it was it was good experience. You then you then came to the UK. Was yeah, age of age of age of. I couldn't stay home anymore because I was I was in trouble. Um, I couldn't stay back at home. Police was after me. Um, I ran away when I was eighteen. I, later seventeen, I left home. Um, I got myself in the UK. Um, when I arrived, no, no word in English. I couldn't speak nothing in English. Um, sleeping on the street in Barking Station for for two, three months. But I'm not gonna lie to you. I was so happy because I was in a safe place. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. I wasn't in danger. Um, um, in a free place, I could do a sport again. Um, but really tough time because. When you don't speak nothing in the language, um, when you are hungry, there is no place for you to sleep. There is no food for you to, to eat. It, you have a different different vision from life, you know? Um, I used to go to West Ham Boxing Club, sparring these kids, English people, you know, Irish, Gypsy. Uh, they, they, obviously, they were a good boxer because I didn't know how to box. I was just, I was a kickboxer. I know how to fight. Um, but... Because I know I knew how to fight, just brought me here where I am today, and I learned how how to box. Um, I impressed the coaches. They took me to some tournaments, some fights. Uh, I did well. Uh, with no experience, I won Harrington Box Cup in elite. I fought three three days back to back. Um, then I, that, that's when I knew I can, I can make it. You know, I always had faith in myself. Yeah. It's, it's some story. I mean, Dean, you, you've worked with I, I don't know how many boxers and, you know, you often hear stories of hardship at the beginning of boxers' lives before, well, before careers come around. But Ali's story, I mean, to get to where he is now, that's, that's, that's something. Hey, that's some harrowing stuff, man. It's, it, it, it's horrific. You know what I mean? A young child, you know, losing aunties um, and close family members being in the car actually just obviously had that. I mean, and then having to go through 
that kind of stuff through with your parents. It, it, like you said, there's people who, who have similar stuff like that, you know. But, um, I know in third world countries, obviously, it's a lot different, you know, because here, a lot of the, 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 I suppose there's suffering everywhere around the world, but look, it, it's it's just like, uh, you know, it's, you know, God willing, you're, 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 you know, there was, you was destined for something else, you know what I mean? So, you're here to tell the tale, and now you've got a different chapter to kind of write in terms of boxing, so it's amazing, you know what I mean? Uh, very true, you know. Um, there, there should be a reason if everybody died and I didn't die, you know. There should be a reason that I believe that destiny wants me to be somewhere that I deserve to be. Maybe I have, maybe God has planned for me. I gotta do something, you know. I always try to inspire people. People come up to me with excuses and stuff like that. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Um, you don't know what is hard time. You don't know what is poverty. You don't know what is coming from a drug family. Um, you never, you never slept hungry. You know, you never been on the street. You never slept on the street. You, what are you talking about? And you complain about silly things. Your your future is is something that you're obviously very keen to work on and very keen to to make as far far from you know as far from your past as, as, as it can be, so to speak. What what plans do you have with Wasserman? What what what's your goals for the next kind of or, or not just with Wasserman, but in boxing in general? What what are your plans to to continue your your journey that you've obviously turned everything around already? But what's next? To be honest, I'm. I'm still learning. Uh, I started boxing when I was when I just arrived in the country. You know, I, I, I never had a boxing background, and in the ring is the loneliest place that everyone knows. You know, I'm, I'm just wanna I wanna learn. I wanna improve my craft, uh, improve my skills. Still learning, but but thanks Wasserman and Sawalan brothers because they wanna keep me as a as a busy fighter, as a active fighter five six fights guaranteed per year so that gives me the opportunity to learn uh to to show myself you know and being around good fighters also um i all i want to do i just want to stay active i just want to learn and we just take it step by step um well um, i believe in in couple of years i can i can make bigger statement because I have faith in myself when I spar with some good names. I know what I'm capable of. If I could make it that far, I see myself being a world champion, you know, and I have all the confidence for it. Where Where are you training now? Who Who with? Uh, you know, what, what coaching team, what gym, etc. Um, I train in Essex at the moment, but by next week I'm changing gym, uh, going to South London, Churchill Boxing Club. Um, my coach and my manager, coach Kieran Duffy, very, uh, very good coach, good manager. He look after me, um, and just uh, work on my craft, work on my skill every day. Um, a lot of sparring sessions. Um, so it's it's going great, to be honest. You um, you know, you know the name Kieran Duffy, Dean. You, I know, I know you're well connected in those parts. I think the name. Resonate somewhat. I know Churchill boxing. I know there's a few guys down. I've been there a few times. You know what I mean? Um, I've took various different people down there sparring and stuff like that. I think um, so. Yeah, I'm not hundred though. I'm you're bringing, like, what, what weight? What weight are you boxing at, at the minute? Super bantam weight. Okay. Super bantam. Um, we got some very good fighters. Super bantam. Um. Uh, I, I just don't see nothing less than them, you know, understand. Um, but one step at a time. Absolutely. I've, I've got to say, Ali, I, I came down and did, did some work with you, was it, I think, either last week or the week before. And your right. energy in the gym, your, your kind of hunger, and you've got a real close-knit team around you with regards to, to family and, and, and friends and things as well, is, is exactly, I guess, what's needed that positive mindset. Uh, I mean, Dean, you, you must sure. see it in young guys all the time. The the mindset is almost just as important as the, the physical uh, abilities. Very true. You know, um, Dean, you've been around some big names yourself, Chris. You know, it's all about the mindset. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry to learn. I'm always positive. 
Um, for me, being in a gym training is the happiest place, to be honest. You know, I'm obsessed with boxing. I'm up, I just want, I'm obsessed to improve every day. I'm hungry to learn. I, I believe I'm a good student. Um, so I, I just need the opportunity to to show myself, to learn. Every day when I step in a gym, I, I'm like, thank you, God, because I couldn't ask for more. To, to being here today is a big blessing for me, you know. Um, having the chance to learn, having the chance to train, um, it's, a, it's a big pleasure for me. It, it's, it's like every day I step in a gym, I feel extremely happy. I have such a big smile on my face because I, again, I have the opportunity to learn today and I just want to learn every day. Um, and I love my family, you know, I, I don't have family here. Um, I have some good friends loyal to me. They love me. They show me a lot of love. They support me. Um, what could I ask more, you know? Dean, what, in your, in your experience, what, what, what does the uh, how does the journey differ? We, we had Jose Stewart on here uh, earlier in the week or, or last week. Big heavyweight, same sort of career level. You know, it's still very much early days. But the heavyweights they they get a lot more attention because they're the bigger boys. Yeah. The super bantamweight. How does that differ? What 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 has Ali got ahead of him? Do you think what 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 can he expect to come across in his in his journey in boxing? Do you know what? What from what I'm listening to, do you know a lot of people struggle probably because you know people do it. If you haven't have that, if you haven't got that zest, that super passion, you know, he said he's excited once he goes in the gym. Some people ain't excited. They do it and they go through the motions. And when you go through the motions, it's not a good thing to because boxing isn't about going through the motions. You gotta, you gotta, you got you gotta want it every day. You gotta strive to be better every day. And every time you go in there, you want to say to yourself, "I want to improve." And um, I see it sometimes with guys that just come in and they tick over and they think it's gonna be enough. And I'm saying to him, there's someone training even harder than you. As much as you think you're training harder, there's someone training harder than you. They're more dedicated than you. They live, they sleep, they watch, they breathe fighting. You know what I mean? And a lot of the guys, they're not, they don't seem to have that. For me, what I know is a lot of them, you know, some people say, oh, yeah, this and that. But then when I talk to them about, did you watch any fights over the weekend? Did you watch this? Did you watch that? Did you hear what, did you read what that was said? Did you watch this? Po-? They don't really live the life of someone who, wants to live and breathe and sleep boxing as I do because there's not many things that try and get past me when it's <laughs> when it's about boxing, you know what I mean? It's fights that have gone on and things for me to learn. I'm learning all the time. I read I read about boxing, I educate myself. Um, I watch fights and then I read people who write about the fights and here I differ, how they differ in the when the write up of the fight and watching the fight. And I sometimes listen to the commentating as well differently because you got you're gonna gauge different things from fighting. So it, it's it's a good thing. Uh, it's a long journey. Bantamweight, super bantamweights. You know them small guys. They throw a lot of punches. Their careers are quite short as well because they 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 tend to have a lot of hard fights. You know what I mean? Unless you get someone who's a big puncher at bantamweight, they tend to have a lot of hard fights. They normally go the distance. You know what I mean? A lot of them. Sometimes you get punches in that division. But, um, you know, their careers are ended a lot quicker than heavyweights if you look at, you know, history and stuff like that. But, I mean, he's a young man. How old are you now? Just 10, 24. Yeah, so he's, yeah, 24. So, you know, he's got a good few years in him. How many amateur fights did you have? Only 10. Wow, only 10. Only that's 10. good. Yeah. That's good. And you won Harringate in that and what else? Um, uh, literally, my fir- my first fight I attended in uh, Harrington Box Up. I don't know somehow it was like one, one. Level, it was one class um, novice, and it was one elite. I don't know somehow they put me in elite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I fought against. Good. Yeah, they fought. I, I fought the first day against one of the toughest amateur fight I had. Um, and he signed with Frank Warren, a very good prospect. Um, Matsu Abdullah. I fought against him. I I beat him the day one, and then. Went to the second day, to the third day. I'm like, okay, you know, I got it in me. So I just have to learn how to box because uh, I know how to fight. I, I won in 2017 and in 2018. Um, uh, because as I said, I just stopped boxing for the last couple of years, you know. Um, Try to be active as much as I could. The reason I don't have a lot of fight in amateur, maybe I could have 10 more fights because I was struggling to live a normal life. You know, mm-hmm. um, when those kids were sleeping in their house, I was sleeping on the street. 
when they had mm -hmm. food on the table, I was I was trying to make something to eat, you know. So yeah. I, outside the ring, I was hustling and uh, trying to survive again. It was for me, it was a matter of surviving. Still going to the gym every day, trying to learn. But now I'm in a position with a team behind me, with the people behind me, a sponsor, uh, um, uh, my strength conditioning coach, my nutrition, my boxing manager, my boxing promoter, everything. It's like a chain. Uh, I believe I'm in a place that not every fighter it is today. And it doesn't matter what's your background. I, I have that much confidence to say I'm, I'm in a great position now. Um, so now is the time for me to just keep grinding and then make it better every day. Yeah, absolutely. What's your, what's your, what's your short-term goal, Ali? Because you mentioned you want to go on and win a world title. Um, as much as I love the ambition, that, that doesn't happen overnight for, for anybody. So I guess, I guess you've, got, you've got to have short-term things. So what's, what's the first thing you want to do? What, what, what's, what's your career like in the next six, seven months? I just I just want to build up as much as I can. I just want to get a regular fight, you know, build up my record, um, get some fight, um, experience different opponents, experience different situation in the ring. Um, so that's my next short term goal. You know, in the next couple of months, hopefully by next January, February, I can be I don't know um, now three and oh, I can be six, seven and oh, or uh, get a couple of fights. Um, Trying to learn, you know, that's my goal. I just want to improve for the next couple of fights. Yeah, no, fair play. Listen, I am um, just away from boxing, so I'm aware we kept you 20 minutes already. I can see Dean just sneaking a, a quick drink in there when he. <laughs> when he no, no, I'm getting myself ready. Uh, my session starts at two in it. Obviously, remember, I coach Monday, Wednesday, yeah. and Friday. I coach the guys I've got, so I'm just but, um, whatever energy in my body. I'm, I'm start, I, I can feel myself relaxing. Yeah, no time I've got a good uh, two, three hours of uh, training ahead of me, also, so it's all good. Let me ask you both, Ali. I saw you were at the football last night. It's uh, it's Euro fever at the minute, uh, just away right. from boxing. England, Denmark tonight, final on Sunday. We we'll bring it home. We'll bring is, it it home. is it England's time? Uh, I think so. I think so. This time, I think we're going to shine. You know, um, last time I was watching the football, it was it was crazy. I think, I think if Italy plays like the way he played last night against England, I, I think England's going to win. You know, and I wish the best luck for England tonight against Denmark. Um, let's see how it goes. What are you thinking, Danny? You watching the game tonight? Yeah, the boys are doing good. You know, it's it's, it's refreshing to watch and. Uh... When they're singing, it's coming home. It actually feels like it's fucking coming home, son. <laughs> Normally, when they sing that, if you start singing that as you're getting happy, before you know it, you're out on the curb. Listen, it's not come home, sunshine. We've got to pack up. Let's get out of it. <laughs> yeah, them guys again. But this time, this time, there is a lot more uh, confidence in the air. With first, I'm gonna big up man like Sterling. Obviously, he's from the manor. You know what I mean? And uh, obviously. Um, what's his name? Bao, Bain? What's his name? Kevin? What's his name? Bao. You know? The score, the, the, the Harry Kane. Kane. I, I, you know, I'm not a mad, avid football man, but I'm calling out the next guy. Harry Kane, he's doing his thing now. He's back, he's scoring. But look, um, all of the guys are helping each other. There's another guy on the wing. I can't remember his name. What's the one on the wing that was serving um, up all the passes? He's been... He's well, been we've got, I mean, the talent there. You've got Foden, Grealish, Sancho... Uh, quite funny, you know. You say Sancho. I'm actually uh, just about to meet his dad right now as well. He's coming to the gym at two really? o'clock. <laughs> yeah, he's coming. Is he That's quite... about ditching, ditching the football off and coming being a boxer? No, no, no. His old man, his old man's coming to meet me um, at the gym. We're going to talk about some stuff. Maybe he'll take me to the the the, the box of the football. <laughs> you know, I'm on the way. I'm on the way down. <laughs> but um, that, like, listen, they've got a, an extensive wealth of talent. There's a, the boys are doing really good. Um, you know, the goalkeeper stood up, the defenses stood up, and sometimes the defense and the goalkeepers let us down a lot of the time in the past. You know, um, because we've always kind of had good people up front. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's better than the goalkeepers, but. Um, I think I don't know much about Denmark. You know what? I was thinking about Belgium. I remember Belgium had a really good team one time, but 
I, I got them confused. Denmark and Belgium. I think this should be a, a lot. Belgium had a good team. Belgium had a good team this year. Yeah. They were one is, of the I, I, yeah. I was confused too, but Denmark, it's not a foregone conclusion. It's just like boxing. It's just like anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I guess these guys are going to want to come and upset the apple cart. But look, tonight I'll be there watching it somewhere and rooting for the boys and then roll on, what is it, Sunday final or something, yeah? Yeah, Sunday final. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's going to be mad out here. We we'll bring it home on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. Listen, Ali, it's, it's been a pleasure. We're looking forward to seeing you come onto the scene. We're going to follow your journey from from now and, and who knows where it goes. But, uh, but yeah, listen, all the best with the Wasman journey, the boxing, and, and, and let's stay in touch. We'll get you back on around your next fight time. Thank you so much for having me today. It was a pleasure talking to you, Chris, Dean. Um, you know, uh, to be here for me is uh, is, is great opportunity. Um, and, and I know the future is bright. I know everything is going to go great for me. Um, people are going to start hearing my name out. Uh, I just need to. I just need to get the opportunity to fight, and hopefully, was a man said by end of August, I'll, I'll be out, and then I'll, I'll put a great show on, entertaining people. Um, we'll see how it goes. Amazing, Ali Dean. Maybe it's coming home tonight. We'll find out. Thanks very much. Find out tonight. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us, boys. We'll catch you on the other side. Thanks, Ali. All right. Take it easy.